Okay, now we move on to uh, the next topic which is modes of a fiber. Now, first we will try to do a conceptual understanding of a mode. So, you have you remember total internal reflection, you remember numerical aperture, you remember acceptance angle and you know that the angle theta a here is your acceptance angle which means that what we understood was that any ray of light which is coming in within this acceptance angle is going to propagate inside the system. But is that completely true? Does it mean that my incident ray can come at any arbitrary angle within this acceptance cone and still be propagated? So, you are trying to answer that question. So, let us consider, uh, so this is the question we are asking. Total internal reflection happens for a range of angles, but are all the angles supported which means that this theta i greater than theta c is what we wanted to have, but all these angles are they supported? What happens inside is the constructive interference of the TIR wavefronts are supported, only discrete angles are supported. I will explain this. So, what I have shown as these yellow and these green lines are the wavefronts. Now, we are moving between ray picture to wave picture. Okay. So, what we had understood as uh, you know reason for uh, propagation of light is uh, through a ray picture. But we know for a fact that whenever you talk about uh, dimensions that are close to wavelength, we have to consider the wave picture. So, a wave in let us let us for simplicity consider plane wave, which means let us say I have a light propagating in this direction. If it is a plane wave, the plane wave fronts are orthogonal to the direction of propagation. And what do these plane wave fronts represent? The loci of all the point which has the same face. Okay. So, the wave fronts corresponding to uh, you know the ray A B is marked in orange and the wave front corresponding to ray B C is marked in green. So, we have this wave front coming in here and then we have this wave front going out here and so on. Now, if A B and B C are the allowed rays of the system, the wave front here should have extended and at this point C, the face should be the same as this, otherwise it cannot form a wave front. Remember what was wave front? It is a point, it is a loci of all the points which has the same face. What is the difference between the wave front here? and at this point, from this point it has traversed a path of d b plus b c and reached here. That additional phase should be a multiple of 2 pi, otherwise the light that is reaching here will not be in phase with the light at this point. If this ray, if a b and b c have to be supported by the fiber, it means that the wave front corresponding to this and if I extend it, let us say it is hitting at this point, if, if this has to be a part of the same wave front, if this has a phase phi, at this point also the light should come out with a phase phi. But I know that from the time the light left this point D and it reached this point C, it has traversed a path, which means that that path difference should correspond to a phase difference such that effectively the phase has not changed, which means that it this phase difference should be a multiple of 2 pi. So, for constructive interference all what I am saying is the points uh, this point D, this is the point D and this point C should be a part of the same wave front. Otherwise, as the wave is propagating forward, it is not interfering constructively, it is not building constructively. If this wave front has having a different phase, it means that there is some destructive interference here, I do not have, I do not have energy propagating in this direction. So, now all what is left is to calculate what is the phase difference because of the path difference from B C to uh, D B plus B C. 
So, the phase difference corresponding to the path difference d b plus b c must be an integral multiple of 2 pi. This is the condition I am imposing. So, that this wavefront appears to be the same part of the wavefront, so that there is constructive interference. Now, how do I calculate this phase difference? First of all, I need to know what is the path difference d b. Uh, Let us say this core of the fiber has a dimension d and let us say this angle here is theta. If this angle is theta, this angle is theta, if this angle is theta, this angle is theta, this is also theta and this is theta and this is 90 minus theta. Okay. Now, what would be uh, B c in terms of theta and uh, d? So, your B c is actually d over cos theta d sec theta. What would be B d? For B d you have to look at this uh, right angle triangle here okay. and the angle here is 2 theta and you want the adjacent side of this 2 theta and you can write it in terms of B c and B c you already know. So, what would it be? B d in terms of uh, B c, you have this right angle tri triangle here. So, cos of 2 theta must be equal to B d over B c, because this total angle is 2 theta. Why is this angle a right angle? Because the wavefront is always orthogonal to the uh, uh, propagation direction. So, my B d is equal to B c times 2 cos, uh, cos of 2 theta and so I need to know what is B d plus B c. So, B d plus B c must be equal to uh, you know this also has a B c. So, I take B c out. So, this will be B c times cos 2 theta plus B c is 1 and B c itself is what d sec theta. So, it is d sec theta into 1 plus cos 2 theta and 1 plus cos 2 theta is 2 cos square theta. So, this becomes 2 d sec theta cos square theta which is cos theta. There is some simple trigonometry here, but this is path difference. You want to convert this path difference to phase difference. So, how do you convert path difference to phase difference? A lambda of path difference corresponds to 2 pi phase difference. So, this path difference would correspond to this multiplied by 2 pi by lambda. So, you have 2 d cos theta multiplied by 2 pi by lambda which I have forgotten to write here plus delta is equal to 2 m pi where I am saying that m is equal to 0, 1, 2 etcetera. This is path difference converted to phase difference. Where did this delta phase come from? I have reflection happening here, I have reflection happening here. There are two reflections here and depending on the polarization, you will have a uh, angle because of reflection, but that is going to be fixed. So, you say that this plus delta is equal to 2 m. But what does it mean as far as the uh, light guidance is concerned? I mean for convenience we can even take that delta equal to 0 or you can take a delta as a constant value. It means that this 2 pi by lambda 2 d cos theta plus delta equal to 2 m pi, this m should be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera. Once you have a lambda, once you have decided what is the wavelength of propagation and once you have you know the fiber that is formed, there is a certain d, it means that only specific thetas are allowed in the system. Mind you, these thetas are all greater than the critical angle. I mean, this is all corresponding to greater than critical angle condition. Even after it satisfies critical angle condition, remember what is this theta? This is not at the incident, we are talking about theta at the uh, core cladding interface. Only certain core cladding interface angles are allowed, corresponding to whether it is 2 pi, 3, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi and so on which means only certain incident angles are allowed because each theta here I can map it to a certain incident angle. 
So, even when you are within the acceptance cone, you cannot launch at all possible angles. You can launch only at specific angles and that is going to get decided by your D and also your lambda. So, this gives rise to certain allowed uh, angles in the system and corresponding to these allowed angles. So, only spe specific discrete angles are allowed in the fiber corresponding to these allowed angles we still did not talk about what is the transverse profile. How are these allowed angles going to propagate us? There is something called as this transverse profile for the fiber. How is that energy going to look like? So, each of these allowed angles is a result of a specific interference in space and one way of representing one uh, specific interference is shown like this. You could have another interference which is which is coming up like this. This spatial interference is now spatial pattern is decided by how your interference is happening in the system. right? So, this tells you that this condition tells you that all angles within the critical angle are not allowed in the system only specific angles are allowed in the system and those specific angles are decided by your lambda it is decided by your d. Remember this lambda is lambda in free space or lambda in medium? It is lambda in medium because you are talking about the path and phase in the medium and this conceptually tells that only specific angles are allowed and these specific angles correspond to what are called as the modes of the system. If 10 angles are allowed you say that 10 modes are allowed in the system. Now, as a homework you can calculate if your n 1 is equal to 1.450, n 2 is equal to 1.4 should be larger than this or smaller than this? Smaller 1.440, okay. d is equal to 50 micrometer, find the number of modes and what are the allowed thetas. for lambda is equal to let us say 1550 nanometer. Assume your delta is 0, which is a gross approximation, but that is still okay. 